Good evening. We're grateful and thankful to the Lord to be here tonight. We welcome you to the New Hope Well Bible class tonight. We thank God for his presence. Thank him for his love, unconditional, his mercy that is everlasting, and his truth that endures to all generations. <clears throat> Truly, it's a blessing to be here. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we truly thank you for this privilege and opportunity to assemble ourselves together in your name. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for their salvation and eternal life. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight that we might uh, expound upon your word. <clears throat> Father, we need you tonight to speak to us as we prepare and attempt to speak to your people. Let your word have a free course right now. Pray that your word will convict and convince and make whole. Pray, Lord, that you bring all things back to my remembrance. And we pray and ask you to bless those that are sick with healing, those that are bereaved, comfort, and console as only you can do. Father, we pray for uh, caregivers everywhere then first responders Lord just bless heal strengthen and restore give them the faith and strength that they need we pray Lord that you will deliver us from this coronavirus we pray that you deliver us from all sickness and diseases that we might be the people you're calling us to be in these last and evil days father we ask it all in Jesus name amen <clears throat> all right my brothers and sisters we are going to Continue our study as we deal with the tongue in the book of James, chapter 3, as we talked about controlling the tongue, a test of ministry, controlling the tongue, a test not of ministry but of maturity, controlling the tongue, a test of maturity. Are you a mature Christian? As we uh, get more mature and closer to the Lord, we ought to be able to do a better job controlling the tongue. Last week, we talked from verses, uh, chapter, James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> we gave you the uh, verse 1 through 2, James's exhortation, verses 3 through 12, we talked about James's illustrations, and he gave us three illustrations, we believe. We said that, James said that the tongue had power, power to direct, power to direct. And the illustration that he gave was the bit and rudder, verses 3 through 4. Secondly, the, he taught us that the tongue has power to destroy, and the illustration that he used was fire and the animals, verses 5 through 8. Thirdly, James taught us that the tongue has power to delight. And the illustration was the fountain and the tree, verses 9 through 12. So tonight, my brothers and sisters, we want to begin with talking about the application of this. What is the application? Verses uh, 13 through 18, James deal with the application. We need how we can apply this to our lives. If we know better, we ought to be able to do better. Because remember, we are Christians and we've been uh, indwelt and endued by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, James is have some good teaching for us here tonight as we look at it from the King James Version of the Bible. As we look at verse 13, <clears throat> we will see as James gives us this, uh, the teaches us about the application of uh, applying it to us because when we have wisdom, not only uh, do we know the Lord, but as we grow in the Lord and we mature in the Lord, then we need to have control over all of our members. And it, that includes the tongue. And so the Lord calls us to be mature Christians. We need to mature as Christians. We need to be mature Christians. 
And so it behooves us to work on the tongue. Now tonight, actually James is talking about uh, dealing with the wisdom. The wisdom, one of the key themes in the book of James is wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, it's also found, we've started out in the book of James, if you look at chapter 1, verse 5, wisdom is our practical living directed by the word of God. Wisdom, our practical living directed by the word of God. It is tragic, my brothers and sisters, when Christians like this practical wisdom to direct their affairs, both personally and in the church. Amen. Uh, we need to realize that far too many people have the idea that to be spiritual means to be impractical. And nothing is further from the truth. All right? So let's look at verses, verse 13. Verse 13. Who is, wise, who is a wise man? This is, starts out with this question, who is a wise man and endued? The word endued has the meaning of understanding. Who is a wise man? So James deals with wisdom. If we have wisdom, does that help us control the tongue? Practical living. Uh, we are spiritual people, spiritual beings, and this is something we got to understand. When the Spirit guides us, he uses our mind, and he expects us to get the facts and weigh issues in the light of the Word of God. So look at what James is saying here. He says in verse 13, he asked the question, who is a wise man? And remember, James is talking to the church that is scattered abroad. Remember that James, this James is believed to be the half-brother of Jesus Christ. So James seems to be talking to church members. Amen? <clears throat> it sounds like a pastor to me. James says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? Who is uh, that man that is wise? He has understanding and with knowledge among you. He says, let him show out of a good conversation. Now, the King James used that word, a good conversation, but most of us know when you see that in the King James, it has to do with conduct and behavior. So what John is really saying, uh, let him show out of a good conversation, a good conduct, out of a good conduct. His works with meekness of what? Wisdom. So if you uh, are a wise person, then your behavior should show it. Your conduct ought to show it. You can't just talk it. You're going to have to learn to what? You're going to have to learn to live it, my brothers and sisters. So let us remember that. We're going to have to learn to live it. Amen? So look at that verse 13 again. Who is a wise man? Endue, that's understanding, with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation, out of a good conduct, out of good behavior. His or her work with what? Meekness of wisdom. Christians need to learn to be meek. Moses, <clears throat> one of his attributes was meekness. Meekness. Moses was a meek man. So we need that meekness. James indicates that there are two kinds of wisdom. This is what James is going to teach us here. There are two kinds of wisdom. And this is what we need to understand. And that the believer needs to be what? Discerning. The tongue of the believer can be filled with uh, true wisdom from above, and true wisdom comes from above, or the false wisdom that comes from beneath. It's earthly. It's on the, it's all, all we pick up is earthly. It comes from, and if it's earthly, 
It comes from the devil. And we're going to see this here in the book of James. <clears throat> so in verses 14 through 16, the first thing that James deal with here is the false wisdom. Verses 14 through 16 is false wisdom. False wisdom. So let's look at this here. <clears throat> Verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. He said, if you, some people do have this envying. What is it? A feeling of discontent <clears throat> or resentment for someone else's possession or their advantages that we think or believe that they have. It's envy. He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife, strife has to do with quarreling, struggling. They're always ready to quarrel about any and everything. So James said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, think about that, where? In your hearts. He says, glory not. Don't be glorying in envy and strife that is in your heart. And lie not against the truth. Don't lie against the truth because guess what? There is a truth and the truth comes from the word of God. And my brothers and sisters, believers, in this day and time, we're going, <laughs> the Lord is going to allow the world and Satan to show us how much we need the truth. Just mark my words. We can see it happening. We're going to, uh, as believers, we're going to really desire the truth and learn to love the truth, which is the word of God and God's standards that God has laid out because we hear so much other stuff that we know have not come from God. It's from Satan. It's from the devil. It's false truth. All right? So be aware of that. So false wisdom is called, James called it false wisdom. And look at verse 15. For this wisdom descendeth not from above. That false wisdom do not come from above. Now just keep your little tack there because James is letting us know this wisdom descendeth not from above. It didn't come down from above. Okay, since it didn't come down from above, where did it come from? It is earthly. Number one is earthly. That means it's worldly. It's worldly. It's sensual. That means unspirited. It's not of the spirit of God. And then watch this. It's demonic. It's devilish. That means it's demonic. Now listen, this is what we got to understand. We're either going to serve the Lord, accept what the Lord say, or we're going to accept what the devil puts before us. It's no in-between. It's no ne neutral place. We're either walking with the Lord or we're walking with Satan, the devil. We're either spirit God of God and spiritual beings or we are fleshly, we are earthly, we are of the devil. And so we got to make up our mind who we're going to follow. Look at verse 16. And who are we going to listen to? Who are we going to be satisfied with? Look at verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And so we see so much of that today in our world. Amen? So... This is the false wisdom here that James is talking about. So when there is bitterness and envy in the heart, it will be expressed by, guess what? The tongue. What's in the heart is going to come out through by what? The tongue. It matters not how spiritual a person's teaching might be. If his tongue is not controlled by the spirit from a loving heart, then he or she is imparting false wisdom. Are y'all with me? And how tragic it is. 
when Christians believe this false wisdom and even glory in it. So my brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we line up with the Bible, with God. Because sometimes uh, this is what they do. We, we know that these things contradict the Bible, but instead of us calling people out on it, then, and you know, we know that it's a lie, we know it's against the truth of God's word, but we try to go along with it because we like the people. And James is letting us know this is false wisdom. There's never a time when believers ought to be all right with false wisdom because false wisdom is a lie. And it's, it's prevalent in our day. False wisdom belongs to the world. This is what James is telling us. False wisdom belongs to the world. There it is in verse 15. This wisdom descended not from above, but it is, is earthly, it's sensual, it's devilish, it's earthly. All of this, my brothers and sisters, that's where it comes from. And this, it belongs to the world. That means what? It's earthly. James said it's earthly. It's sensual. That means it belongs to the flesh. It's not spiritual. And then he says it's devilish. It belongs to the devil. My brothers and sisters, it's not of the Lord. It's a false wisdom. Today we live in a time when we act like we don't know right from wrong. People feed us so much stuff. You got to really stay with the word of God. So, look at here, what we see here in James in verse 15 and 16, we see the three great enemies of the believer. Let's look at them. You can always tell when a church or family follows false wisdom because there will be what? Jealousy, there'll be division, and there'll be confusion confusion and confusion so many times prevalent in our churches confusion and it shouldn't be in our homes confusion why because we are dealing with what false wisdom we're not dealing with the truth we need to make sure that we're teaching the truth in our homes and then teach the truth in our churches. Let's, when people ask questions, our children, our grandchildren ask questions, let's tell them the truth. And they got plenty of questions today. Wow. Plenty of questions. <laughs> because, as I always say, adults are messing up the children. And we are act giving them this false wisdom and we act like it's the truth and it's not. So far where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And this is what James tells us. So my brothers and sisters, when those things are there, then this is what you're going to see. So instead of humble, depending on the spirit and the word, uh, people look to the world for ideas of the flesh for strength. We live in a time when we don't want to look to the Lord for anything. We got to trust some man. Is they're going to give us deliverance. Honey, our deliverance only comes from the Lord. And then we're going to have to stop lying about stuff. I was <laughs> listening to this program. Oh, Lord. You almost can't watch TV anymore. <laughs> Watching this talk show and uh, the, the, these kids these young ladies they run track and all of this kind of stuff and the transgender men they're biologi biologically men but they're running track they have approved them to run track with the women because they say they're women they feel like women 
And these young ladies can't win anymore. <laughs> They'll never be able to beat these men. It makes no sense. And so this is why we're so messed up in so many ways. And of course, it didn't help any when we got an executive order signed for it, so that didn't help any. But this is what James is talking about. It's false wisdom. It's earthly. It's fleshly. Sensual. Without any spirit of God. David said, I look to the hills and with cometh my help. Why can't we look to the Lord and know what's right and what's wrong? This is what we're going to have to do, my brothers and sisters. Because the church is not going to be spared from all of this stuff. It's going to spill over in the church. And we're going to have to teach our children what's right and what's wrong. We're going to have to use the word of God. Biological man will never be a woman. Woman, biological woman will never be a man. Just that's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what somebody say they think. I feel. Your feelings don't change stuff. Amen. If it did, I'd be feeling like a millionaire tomorrow morning. I have me a million dollars. All I got to do is feel it. I feel it. And then go write that check for it. I'll show you how you feel it. <laughs> be locked up on Sunday. But we are acting as if people say they feel like this. Oh, it's got to be it. Yes, Lord, yes. Okay, look at verse 17 and 18, because we're going to talk about true wisdom. James talks about the false wisdom, where it comes from. It doesn't come from above, but there is, thank God, there is a true wisdom. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, wherever you are, if you're listening, whatever way you're listening tonight, listen, read the Bible. Begin to read and study the word of God. It's real. It's eternal. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but God's word will is forever. So let's get a hold to something that is eternal. Everything else is changing, but God does not change. His word will not change. God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word will not change. Men, great men, powerful men have tried to get rid of the word of God, but they are gone. And the word of God is still here. And yes, people will try again. If God tarries, they will try again. And we thank God we have the freedom, the Study God's word. Preach and teach God's word publicly. It's not like that everywhere. And we need to understand that God has given us this freedom to do this. So let us study God's word and be ready with the word of God, especially if we are believers. Be ready to give an answer to every man of the hope that you have in you. Amen. Don't just be satisfied when somebody tell you that, oh, yes, uh, I'm praying. Well, you don't know who they're praying to. Sometimes you need to question them. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a person of faith. A person of faith doesn't mean that that person is a Christian. It doesn't even mean they're saved. So sometimes you, if you got a good relationship with them, just ask them, well, what is your faith? And then see what they say. <laughs> because some people today, you ask them what their faith is, they say, I'm Baptist. That tells me right away they have no idea what their faith is. <laughs> they don't say Jesus Christ is my Savior. I'm a Christian, and my faith is in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sin and rose with all powers in his hand. He's the one that rescued me from my sins. You see what I'm saying? People camouflage. So let's look at uh, true wisdom. Verses 17 through 18. True wisdom. 
truly a wise man. Look at it. But the wisdom that is from above, a truly wise person gets his wisdom from above. Watch this. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. It's not mixed with anything. It's not diluted with anything. It's pure. Then it's peaceable. Who can argue with that? We're trying to get peace by agreeing with somebody that is as wrong as two left shoes. That will not accomplish anything. And then it's this wisdom from above is gentle. It's easy to be entreated. That simply means, my brothers and sisters, willing to yield. And when they say willing to yield, doesn't mean it's willing to compromise the truth. But they'll be, they're willing to be reasonable. Amen. I will listen to you. Even though when you start out, I know you are messed up. But you don't have to stay messed up. And because I'm a mature Christian, I can hear you out. Because if I hear you out, you ought to be willing to hear me out. So if I listen to you, maybe, just maybe, you'll listen to me. And I can share Christ with you. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so, full is full of mercy. What? The true wisdom. It comes from above. It's full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Oh, my brothers and sisters, so much partiality going on, so much hypocrisy going on. Amen. It's good for me, but it's not good for you. I can do it, but you can't do it. Look at verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The truth of righteousness is sown in them, is sown in peace of them that make peace. How are you going to sow peace if you don't make peace? You need to be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. This is what Jesus said. So true wisdom comes from above. True wisdom is not earthly. True wisdom, true wisdom, my brothers and sisters, are, is not sensual. True wisdom is not devilish. It's not demonic. But true wisdom, that's false wisdom. True wisdom comes from above. Think about that. True wisdom comes from above. Amen. Look at James chapter 1, verse 17. James says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. I don't know about you, but I want some of those good gifts. I want a perfect gift, and it comes from above. It cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. It's not changing on you every all the time. Never Shadow of turning. There is no shadow of turning in it. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the truly wise man does not have to advertise the fact that he or she is wise. You don't have to go around with a sign on your head. Amen. You will see it in his or her daily life. You will see it in their conduct, in their behavior, in their attitude, in their gratitude. Are y'all with me? That's what meant by that it'll be in their conversation. Some people, man, this is why I love to run up on Christians because it's just good conversation. It's good conversation. Doesn't matter where you meet them. It's good conversation. And you'll it, it, you see it in their meekness. They're not arrogant. There is meekness. Knowledge. Listen, this is what uh, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. He says, knowledge puffs up. 
a person. Just knowledge alone puffs up a person. This is why you need wisdom. You need to know how to use the knowledge that you have. You need some understanding with your knowledge. That's wisdom that comes from God. Only God can give this wisdom to make us know how to live a practical life. Know, make us understand how to apply the word of God to our lives. God's word, it's no good for us to just know God's word. How can I apply the word of God to my life? When God said, love your neighbor as yourself, how can I apply that? The illustration is the story about a miser. <laughs> He's a changed man now. People, God changes folk. And so he hears that his neighbor is sick and his neighbor really could use some food. And he goes out there, oh, yeah, you know, nobody looking for him to do it, but they don't realize when you get saved, God changes your heart. And he has a ham out there in what we used to call the smokehouse. And he goes out there to cut out a big piece of ham to take down to his neighbor that is sick. And the devil says, <laughs> I remember what you used to be. Now, you don't need to be taking him that uh, piece of ham. You know, you used to wouldn't do that. So why would you do it today? You think you all that good? He said, listen, devil, if you mess with me, I'm taking the whole ham. Amen. When we are changed, we know how to apply the word of God to our lives. When you see, and James talks about that. When you see a person in need and you have the means to help, don't be talking about go and be blessed. God has just put them in your way for you to bless them. That's how you apply the word of God to your life. This is the application of the word of God. Amen. You'll be, James is saying, when we are saved, when we have understanding, when we have wisdom with our knowledge, we know how to apply the word of God to our lives. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do I apply it, Pastor? It means you won't do them any harm. You don't be going around trying to hurt your brothers and sisters. You don't try to do harm to your neighbor. You don't falsely accuse them. You don't run them down. This is applying the word of God to our lives. Are y'all still with me? So knowledge puffs up a person, but spiritual wisdom humbles a person and keeps him or her from being arrogant. Christians, there is no place in the Christian's life for arrogance. God's word will humble us. God's spirit will humble us. This is why James said you ought to humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. Amen. How do you do it, James? Well, basically, Peter says that humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he might exalt you in what? Due time. But James says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. That's how it's done. And so we have to spend some time submitting ourselves to God. You have to submit our thoughts to God, our ways to God, even our conversation to God. Because if not, we'll find ourselves like Peter talking out of turn and saying things that we'll regret Later, and my brothers and sisters, don't get up on your high horses because any one of us can do it in a moment. Soon as we hear something that we don't like, before you know it, that tongue has slipped out and said something. But thank God we can get forgiveness. Lord, don't care long, <laughs> don't, don't wait a long time. Just say, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. Admit it. Please forgive me. Make me stronger. Make me strong. What I'm saying, get serious about it. Let's get serious about it. Amen. Get serious about it, my brothers and sisters. So, while the false wisdom 
has its origin in where? In the world. False wisdom, wisdom begins with the world. It's what? It's of the flesh. This is what, remember, it's of the devil. The true wisdom come down from above. I just read that to you a while ago in James chapter 1, verse 17. It comes from above. What does that mean? It comes from God by spiritual wisdom. It comes from God. It comes through the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters. It is not invented by the mind of man. It comes from God. You can't invent it. You can't work it up. You just have to accept it from God. And it would do us good to spend some time on our knees asking God to bless us with a spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, spirit of fear and reverence to him. And this will cause things to start lining up in our lives. My brothers and sisters, we have to learn to pray like Jesus would pray. Because Jesus we, to, in his pr prayer that he taught us, the model prayer, amen, he taught us to pray that God's will be done where? Well on earth. So we need to know that we need to get to the place where we can ask for what Jesus would ask for. That's how we pray as Jesus would pray. Let that, Paul said, let that mind be in you that's also in Christ. We need to be of the same mind and of the same spirit. And then I don't know about you, but I have to ask the Lord over and over. Why? Because I'm still in this flesh. And I have to bring it under control. So I have to ask the Lord, able me to be more heavenly minded. Able me to keep my mind on heaven and heavenly divine things. I know y'all don't have to pray like that. Lord, let me be more like your son, Jesus, because you're well pleased with him. I sure would love, Lord, for to be pleasing to you today. I would love to hear you say one day, well done, that good and faithful servant. And so we have to ask the Lord to help us to be faithful over everything that God has entrusted in our care. That's wisdom. That's real wisdom. And sometimes we can get confused if we don't have a closer walk with Jesus. We don't understand, my brothers and sisters, when God has entrusted us with something. Instead of us realizing that God trusted us with this situation. It may not be a good situation from people that's looking in, but you... If you have that situation, God, come on somebody, God allowed you to get in that situation. That means that God trusted you with that situation because God knows, hey, that you're going to trust him to get through that situation. It might be your sickness. It might be the sickness of your spouse. It might be a child. Come on, somebody. God entrusted you with it. Hallelujah. We need to know that God is concerned about every aspect of our lives. And if we're going through it, just be thankful that God has taken us through it and we're not stuck. Remember, the Israelites wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And I ought to say something about this, but I'll wait to Sunday. Jesus had his wilderness experience, but it didn't take him 40 years. And it do, do not need to take us 40 years with our wilderness experience because we need to obey God. Yes, God will take you through the wilderness, but he won't leave you there. And James is saying that we need to realize that true wisdom comes from above. Is anybody still with me tonight? You can't invent it. This true wisdom is pure. There is no error in the word of God. Can I say that again? 
There is no error in the word of God. And I don't care what the world say. I'm just going to stay with the word of God. People get mad at you because you don't go along with all this foolishness that has nothing to do with God's word. Don't line up nowhere. It's political. It's all about politics. It's all about trying to get more of this and more of that. Let's just stay with the word of God. That's what Job did. Even though Satan told God, if you take away his stuff, he'll curse you to your face. But Job didn't curse God. Not even when his wife turned his back on, her back on him and told him to curse your God and die. Sister Job, could it be that Sister Job was tired of taking care of her husband? She didn't realize that God entrusted her to take care of him in his tough time, in his sick days. Until death do us part. Not when you get sick, not when times get bad. God has entrusted you with that child. Now we got so much technology. We want to check on the child, and if it's gone, think it's going to cause us some problem, let's just avoid it. When God has made the decision, they entrust you with that child. Think about it. God can't trust everybody. Hallelujah. Now, where did you get that, Larry? I got it from the book of Job. Job found out. We know today that Job went through all that because God trusted him. God, if you want to get technical about it, God sick Satan on him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Many times I wonder, do God see me as his child and his servant? Is he willing to trust me with some things? One day I know I'll have to stand before him. I have to stand in his court. We sing, we're going sweeping through the city, but the Bible says we'll stand in his court. We'll give an account for the deeds we've done in our bodies since God saved us. And he paid a great price to save us. For God loved us so much, he gave his son Jesus to suffer and bleed and die on the cross for our sin. But thank God he raised him from the dead. And Jesus declared all powers in heaven and in earth is entrusted in my hand. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded of you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's what my commission is. When people like it, I still got to preach it. When they don't like it, I still got to tell you the truth. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One Lord over all that's rich under all that calls on his name. Have you called on his name lately? Hallelujah. So, spiritual wisdom humbles us and keeps us from being arrogant. Wisdom, my brothers and sisters, comes from God. Are y'all with me? And you want true wisdom because there is no error in it. It leads to peace and Harmony. And Lord knows we need some peace, don't we? It's peaceable. That's what James says. So it leads to peace and harmony, not discord. There's so much discord in the world. But we need peace. But listen, God is not telling the church to accept peace at any cost. He's not telling us to line up with somebody that is unrighteous. God can only bless righteousness. So he's not saying you have peace 
because you line up with somebody that's unrighteous because you just want to have peace. No, God can give you peace when you do what's right, when you line up with righteousness. God can give you peace. You can still lie down and rest at night knowing that you did God's will and you're in God's will. You're not going to be able to have peace with everybody that's wrong, but you can have peace with God, and that's what counts. This is what Jesus gave us when he saved us. He gave us peace with God, and this is what it's all about. That's the true wisdom, my brothers and sisters. Are y'all still with me? Well, let me try to close this thing, my brothers and sisters. Where people bow to the true word of God, there will always be peace. When we bow to the word of God, there will always be peace. The church that bows to the will and the word of God, you can always have peace. The wisdom from above is gentle. That means it's patience. Is forbearing. When the flesh controls the tongue, there is a flood of words without huh? self-control. When there is a flood of words without God's word, without self-control, guess what? There's going to be unrest. There's going to be confusion. There's going to be jealousy and envy. There's going to be people accusing folk. So, when James says easy entreated, it suggests a willingness to yield or to be reasonable. But remember, brothers and sisters, the wise man is full of mercy, not quick to judge or condemn, and his life is full of good fruits. This is what's in verse 18. There is no wavering. There is no partiality. Though he or she is willing to yield, he or she is not willing to compromise the truth. Amen. There are times when we have to yield. Getting on the interstate right out here. <laughs> I know I'm going to have to yield. I can't just run out there. If that 18 will is coming, I'm going to have to yield to it. Amen? So you be reasonable. You don't want to get run over, but be reasonable. It doesn't mean that you give up the truth. Finally, true wisdom will not allow for hypocrisy. This is in verse 18. It will not allow for hypocrisy in verse 17. Excuse me. It will not allow for what? Hypocrisy. True wisdom won't. What is said is true and backed with a true motive. It's in, look at verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That's another picture of the tongue. It sows seeds which later grow and bear what? Fruit. If the tongue is controlled by God, the fruit will be righteousness and what? Peace. And righteousness is of God. And my brothers and sisters, we as Christians, we should love righteousness and we should love peace. Amen? But when the Bible talks about peace, it's not advising us or encouraging us to team up with somebody that's unrighteous and doing unrighteous things in order to have peace. It's not telling us to compromise God's righteousness, our righteousness that can only come from God. Amen? So, my brothers and sisters, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then it's peaceable, gentle, easy to entreat full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That make peace. If you make peace, you can sow peace. 
Amen. And then guess what? You can reap what you sow. If you sow it, you can reap it. Gracious Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we've able to spend together in your name. And Father, we just pray now in the name of Jesus that you will bless us with true wisdom. We pray that we'll have a desire to let free wisdom have a free course in our lives. And Lord, let us love your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us how to pray and what to pray for. Father, we pray for the leaders of this nation. Pray that they'll have a mind to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all these other things may be added unto them. We pray that they will thirst and hunger for righteousness. We pray, Lord, that they will want to know about your grace. And Father, we pray for our sick to be healed. We pray for our lost to be saved. We pray for the bereaved to be comforted. And Father, we just pray for our local authorities. Pray that they will look to you from whence cometh their help, realizing that all of their help comes from you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.